In the first part of this module, we will deal with the automatic starting of the engines. Then, we will study how to start the engines manually. Engine 2 is started first, then we will start engine 1. Let's start engine 2. The related start valve opens, and the fuel used is reset to zero. On the engine warning display, N2 increases. It is displayed on a gray background. On the ECAM engine page, the oil pressure increases. At 16% N2, an igniter is powered, A or B. At 22% N2, the fuel starts to flow. We can see the indication on the engine warning display. 15 seconds after fuel is on, EGT and N1 increase. At 50% N2, the start valve closes, and the ignition is switched off. At approximately 58%, it stabilizes, and the gray background disappears, indicating that the start sequence is finished. Engine 2 is now running. Its parameters are stabilized. Notice that the thrust limit mode has changed to TOGA, and today, the N1 rating limit is 90.1. Engine 1 has also been set to on, following the same procedure as for engine 2. Engine mode selector has been switched to normal. Both engines are now running. All their parameters are stabilized. Let's now talk about manual engine start. There are several reasons why a manual start may be required, including low pneumatic pressure. The main difference between a manual and an automatic start is that the pilot controls the moment at which fuel and ignition are supplied to the engine. The FADEC only provides passive monitoring of the engine during the start sequence. This means that the pilots take on the responsibility to prevent an abnormal start. The FADEC will abort the start sequence if only on ground an EGT start limit is exceeded before N2 has reached 50%. The FADEC only controls the position of the HP fuel valve and the operation of both igniters when the master switch is on. The closure of the start valve at 50% N2 and on the ground, ignition cut off. Note, manual starts are completed by using the procedure, detailed in the FCAN 3, Supplementary Techniques.